All right, Craig Setzer in CBS4 Weather Control. For those of you who are just to join us at the top of the hour for an update, here's the latest. We have Category 5, Hurricane Dorian now. The winds have continued to increase. The pressure has continued to drop. Uh, there is not much expectation it will get much stronger, but it is so strong right now. Another five miles an hour is not going to make a big difference. The speed has slowed just a little bit now, moving west at seven. We expect that that is going to continue uh, slowing there as it moves to the west over the next day, and then after that, a turn to the north. Right now, it is literally centered over the eastern part of the Abacos there, Great Abaco Island, and to be precise, uh, it's near Elbow K on the eastern side of the Abacos there, and that's where Hopetown is located. So uh, real quickly on the advisory here, let's go forward into time. The track has not changed. There we are at our Monday morning position. There we are at our Tuesday morning position, and the intensity is forecast to go down, and then after that, Wednesday morning. Now let's go back to our, our other graphic here, which is this wind speed, uh, most likely time of arrival graphic. So there we are at 9 a.m., and that's, that's on uh, Monday, that's tomorrow. Let's go to noon. There we are at noon, and you can see now, uh, uh, the good half of Broward is basically in that arrival of tropical storm force winds. Almost all of metropolitan Palm Beach County is in it, and it's still touching northeast Miami-Dade. Going forward, there's 3 p.m., uh, there is 6 p.m., and you can see now the hurricane force winds are starting to touch Palm Beach County there. Uh, much of Broward now has the possibility of the tropical storm force winds, and just the edge here is touching Miami-Dade County. So this is 6 p.m. Monday evening. So this is where the winds have come up now. There's squalls, rain squalls, very strong wind gusts in the rain squalls, and uh, that's the situation, and the hurricane force winds touching uh, Palm Beach County. There's 9 p.m. Monday. You can see uh, these lines are not moving west much more. They're almost stationary. The hurricane force winds are pushing in a little bit. Uh, and then let's go on a little bit farther in time. There's 11 p.m. Monday. There's 3 a.m. So as the storm has moved along and basically stopped, these winds are not encroaching into South Florida anymore. They are kind of staying there. Now, the thing is, and this is where it gets kind of dicey because the, the difference between the tropical storm force winds into the hurricane force winds is not a huge area. That line of going from pretty windy to very windy to extremely windy is only about 60 to maybe 100 miles and certainly covers the width of one of our counties. So it's quite possible that during the peak of this, which is probably going to be Monday night into Tuesday, it, it will just be kind of windy in Miami-Dade much windier in Broward and very, very windy and bad in Palm Beach County. That's a possibility because I think we're going to have this, this kind of this sharp difference between where the winds do a little bit of damage, sporadic power outages, there's more damage as you go north, and there's even more damage as you go north of that. Remember, Irma, Irma basically just blanketed just about everybody in South Florida with pretty strong winds, minimal category one. Uh, upper end tropical storm. So, so Irma, everybody almost got the same, the same deal. <laughs> Thanks. Somebody brought me some water. I guess I was clearing my throat. I may do that from time to time. This is live TV. Uh, next time I'd like to order some hot tea. No, just kidding. So um, let's show you then as we are here on uh, Tuesday morning at 3 a.m. And let's go forward now a little bit more into the time. That's Tuesday at 6 a.m. Now this, I believe, is why Broward County has canceled their schools on Tuesday, which I think is a very, very wise decision. Uh, because still the threat is tropical storm force winds, and you can see the hurricane force winds not too far away. Now the big thing about this, the big takeaway is, a little more motion to the west of Dorian, or even a little bit south, brings all of this a little bit closer. And I'm not saying that uh, the storm's gonna do this. No, 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 no. But just the fact that it moves just another 20 miles west, all of these lines move 20 miles to the west. Just the fact that it doesn't start climbing north, all of those edges kind of move along there to the west like that. So that's kind of a, a consideration here, and that's why uh, I think in Broward County, my recommendation this morning was that, especially if you're like, uh, and maybe I should draw a Broward County line. I, I'll do that in just a second. <clears throat> but especially like from Coral Springs down through Sunrise, uh, east to Plantation, down through eastern Hollywood, Hallandale Beach, 
up to Fort Lauderdale, up to Pompano Beach, kind of basically the north and east, maybe mainly north of 595 and say east of, well, the Turnpike's pretty far east, so, so let's say 441. Those areas of Broward, east of 441 and north of 595, I think you should probably put up shutters. Uh, I live on the western edge of that, outside of that. I put up my shutters, especially on the west and northern facing exposures. And here's the reason why. Because at this point, the winds going into Dorian are going to be blowing like that. So that's blowing from west to east and eventually from southwest to northeast. And with the winds blowing like that, because we're going to be kind of on the fringe here, objects are going to tend to blow into, I'm sorry, uh, lose the arrows, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to arrows across my face. Um, so the, the, the anticipation would be that you would want to shutter on that side of the house because things would be more likely to blow into your windows in that side of the house. Um, sometimes there's, there's times when we say shutter all the way around the house, but that's when a storm is coming directly at us and we don't know if we're going to be on the north or the side of it. In this case, we have a very, very strong assumption that we are, the storm is going to be to the north. We're going to be on the west and the south of it. Actually, I'll, um, you know what? Let me do this. Let me change one of my monitors here and show you this. So there's the storm. This is Tuesday, 6 a.m. So the winds are going to be blowing this way. When a storm typically comes right at us, we don't know where it's going to be. We don't know what side of the house we should shutter. But because the wind's coming this way, we want to shutter those windows on that side if we're going to do modest shuttering. Now, the farther you get to the north, the recommendation probably would be to shutter everything, especially in Palm Beach County, maybe northern, extreme northern and northeast Broward County, uh, Coral Springs, Coconut Creek, Parkland, on over to Pompano Beach, Deerfield Beach, uh, Lauderdale by the Sea, coming down to the south a little bit, uh, Lauder Hill, Tamarack. Those are areas that I think that uh, I might go ahead, if it's not too much trouble, shutter the whole house. If you're doing a modest shuttering, then it's those exposures that are facing west. So, and let me address this quickly because some people are saying, um, why do you shutter the house? Well, well, two reasons. One, you don't want your windows to break and let the rain water and things like that. The shutters don't keep the wind out. They just keep anything blowing in the wind from breaking the windows and letting the wind get in. So two reasons. You don't want the rain to come in if the window gets broken. You don't want debris to come in. But more importantly, when the winds get stronger, uh, and I don't think we're going to see these type of winds, but the, but the, 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 the protocol, I guess, is the, is the best word. When the winds get stronger, you want to keep that wind from getting out of the, inside the house. You want to keep your whole house envelope. You don't want to open windows to equalize pressure. Never, ever, ever. You want to protect the windows from being broken so the pressure of the wind doesn't get in. That's when we get into the category one, category two type of winds and anything above that. I don't think we're going to see that in South Florida, in Miami-Dade, or Broward. Uh, of course, northern and eastern Broward, it's the possibility if it shifts back a little bit more, it's a little bit higher. But we want to keep the winds out of the house, and we don't want the rain to, to damage our, uh, our stuff. So um, I think the big thing also we have to consider, because remember, the, the arrival of the winds now on this graphic that I was showing you, that was early Monday morning. Now we're talking Tuesday morning. So while this isn't a huge storm in size, it's a slow-moving storm. So similar to Irma, one of the similarities there, this could be potentially a kind of a long duration event where the wind blows for a period of time, not just a quick, the winds come up, the winds go down 12 hours and you're done. This is going to be one of those where the winds could blow very hard for a day, maybe a day and a half. In fact, let's go forward here and explain that, talk about that. So that's our 6 a.m. position. Now there's our 9 a.m. position and you can see the winds haven't uh, moved any farther to the west. They have not, but a little track shift would bring them there. And then after 9 a.m., there's noon, and this is Tuesday, 3 p.m. Finally, there at 6 p.m., you can see what's happening. The winds are moving away. So it's a long-duration event. What do we see in long-duration events? The winds don't have to be terribly, terribly strong to eventually have branches break, things break, go into power lines, and we lose power. So the main thing, uh, I think, for all of us in South Florida, Miami-Dade and Broward, is to think about power outages, pre-placed flashlights, get your radio ready to go. You know what? And on that note, hang on. Don't go anywhere. <clears throat> if you print the CBS4 Hurricane Guide, it's online, cbsmiami.com. And I'm going to do a shameless plug here. The cover of it, when I was much younger. 
<laughs> the, the thing that I think is the most important page to print is this one right here. It's called the radius map. Because what we found, what I found was during Irma, the power went out, and I would have to explain in great detail for those listening on the radio where the storm was. If you print this map, I appreciate the zoom in there. If you print this map, it's got little uh, check marks here, east, northeast, north, and it's got rings, range rings, we call them, about every 25 miles. So I could say, I should have built a full screen graphic. I could say, okay, don't zoom in anymore. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I could say um, the worst of the weather right now, if you're listening on radio, find the area that says NE Northeast and go out 25 miles. And that's where it would be. Or find the arrow, the point that says N and go out 50 miles. That's where the worst is. So that's what uh, is a good idea to print now. You can print it in black and white. It works in black and white or in color. And uh, so that's something to, to have handy with your flashlights, have that by your radio. Because that way, uh, if we have to start talking to folks on radio, I can give very specifics. If a tornado warning is issued, I can say the tornado is located right here. Look at your radius map. So that's kind of, I think, a, a good standing of where we are now, what's going on. Uh, and, and let me just recap, because I think it's important to recap here. And I can go to the radar. I'll do that on my other computer here. And, uh, and talk about this. Uh, once again, I'm trying to get to that other computer. We've got a bunch of graphics and monitors here. OK, so let's show you this. That's the uh, current center of the hurricane. You can see it there near Marsh Harbor uh, and the Abacos. I do not think that that center thing, that donut of intense winds is coming here. OK, let's be clear about that. I don't think the center is coming here. We are not going to have a direct hit. But in this case, we don't need a direct hit to feel the effects of it and to have impacts from it. That's what we're talking about here. So when you listen to the press, the news conferences, and when you listen to people talking about what's not going to hit here, the center is not going to hit here, right? But the storm is big, relatively speaking, with respect to us. It's not a huge storm all in all, but, but the winds extend out from that center point. That's that winds, the winds that extend out from the center point. That's what we're, we're concerned about. That's what we're watching. That's what we will feel the effects from. So that's what we're talking about. So we've got our terminology straight here. Okay, direct hit, no. Impacts, yes. Direct impacts, yes. But not from that center part there, okay? So that's how we're going to plan. That's how we're going to be thinking. And one last word of advice here. <laughs> this is what I tell everybody. This is what I tell everybody at the station. Keep your brain thinking kind of nimble here. Don't be totally married to, locked in, uh, buying this and, and losing t attention, paying, stop paying attention to it, because things can change. They, oh my gosh, look at the storm. Things have changed so much. Things can change again. So when the new advisory comes in at 5, of course, we'll be on the air. We'll be on the air with any updates between now and then. But we'll have all the details. But be ready, if there are changes, to change your thinking. OK? And I'm not saying that there's going to be a drastic turn and it's coming here. I'm just saying that little shifts for South Florida will make differences weather-wise. OK? All right. So I think I've spoken enough. I've worn myself out and everybody else out. And of course, we will be on uh, as needed. Uh, we'll be back at 3 for a brief update. And then also we'll have uh, coverage starting at 5. But we will come in with a new advisory and the new forecast track uh, coming up when it comes in then. OK? So stay tuned to CBS4 and we'll keep you up to date.